Hello and welcome to AA Computers and Technology. I am once again snowed in today, so I have time to make another video. So today's review is going to be on this Excel Digital Multimeter, model DT9205A, and it's currently selling for about $10 on Amazon.com, and of course I will post the link uh, to the page where you can purchase this multimeter in the uh, video description. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking, uh, it's a $10 multimeter, it's probably absolute garbage, um, but it's actually not that bad for $10. Uh, you do get quite a few features on this multimeter. Um, now don't get me wrong, it is lacking uh, some of the features that you would find on a much nicer multimeter, but for 10 bucks, you do get a lot for your money. First off, let's talk about what you get when you first receive the multimeter. It comes in a very generic looking cardboard box labeled digital multimeter, and digital multimeter is labeled all over the box. And on the back, we have a little more information on the multimeter itself. It's labeled DT9200A. So I'm guessing this is just one of their revisions. According to the box, it has a large screen display, auto power off, which it does. After about five minutes of being on, uh, with no use, it turns off. Uh, transistor tester, great buzzer sound, it's all right. Uh, and then uh, you guys can go ahead and read that. Made in China. Wonderful. The multimeter comes with a pretty cheap pair of test leads. Uh, quality's not that great. They get the job done, but mm, quality construction is pretty poor. Uh, it says it's rated for 1000 volts, uh, but I'm not sure how many amps these uh, little test leads would take before they actually melted in your hand. So, uh, not sure. Probably 20 amps because this meter is rated for 20 amps for 10 seconds, but uh, once again, not sure, and of course this multimeter isn't fused, so the, eventually, you know, these things would melt in your hands. Ah, I would suggest using them. It also comes with a very helpful operation manual, which in the reviews that I read, it said that it didn't come with a manual. Many people were complaining about the fact that it didn't come with a manual. Um, of course, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll scan this whole manual and put it up at the end of the video so you guys can take a look at it. And now we can go ahead and take a look at the main attraction of this review, which is the multimeter itself. And we will take a look at all the functions later in the video. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the cosmetic aspects of this multimeter. So the first thing that you're going to notice when you take this multimeter out of the box is the sheer size of the unit itself. Um, the length of the multimeter is about seven and a half inches. And then the width is about three and a half inches and then thickness is about one inch and let me just bring another unit in here for comparison this is my new case in capacitance meter and you can just see how big this XL multimeter really is whether or not you like the size of the unit really depends on what kind of person you are I personally like the size of the multimeter everything on the front is easily accessible all of the text is easy to read um, there's no ridiculously small buttons or knobs to turn, uh, anything like that. Everything on here is easy to grab onto and easy to push. You get a nice big uh, LCD display right here. Of course, it's not backlit, um, so if it's dark, you're not going to be able to see anything. Now, the only real issue that you may have with the size of this unit is if you work in the field and you have to take your multimeter to, uh, to different locations, because it might be a little bit hard to fit in your field bag or uh, any other pouch that you place your multimeter in. Uh, because once again it is quite large uh, and that would reduce its portability. But besides that I have absolutely no issue with the size whatsoever. As far as quality goes it's not bad for a $10 unit. The unit itself is made out of a pretty strong pretty durable plastic. The outside of the unit is lined with a rubber case and once again that's durable as well. And that goes all around the multimeter and it can be taken off, which I will demonstrate in just a minute. The selector switch doesn't feel like it's going to break into a million pieces whenever you turn it, so that's a good thing. It has a nice big clunky power switch. And there were a couple customer complaints on the Amazon customer review page about the power switch wearing down after a while. Um, I've had absolutely no issue with that. I've been testing this unit for about six months, and I haven't run into any problems. Although I have 
only been using it under light use, you know, for a project here and there every once in a while. Um, but once again, six months, no problems. So yeah, fine for a ten dollar unit. So on the back of the multimeter, we can see the battery compartment, which houses our nine volt battery, which powers the multimeter. There's a nice little stand on the back, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. It's a little bit hard to use it with just one hand, but there you go. That's how the stand works. All I do is pull it out and just lay the multimeter down with the stand up. There's three holes in the back of the case for the speaker. And that's about it for the back of the multimeter. As I said earlier in the video, the little yellow case does come off. And all you have to do is grab it by the edge and gently pull it back. Uh, you will need to remove the yellow rubber case in order to gain access to the fuses. And of course the fuses aren't on the back of the unit to make things easy. They had to make it hard. So if you want to gain access to the fuses, you have to remove this little yellow rubber case. And then you have to completely disassemble the unit, which is so much fun. So much fun. Um, I'm actually not going to be disassembling this unit though uh, during this review. So sorry guys if you're a bit disappointed about that not going to take apart this unit because uh, it looks like it would be an absolute nightmare. I do not see any screws. So that's not something I want to deal, deal with right now. So that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the functions this multimeter has to offer. By just looking at our dial right here, we can see that we can measure both AC and DC voltage. We have a transistor tester right here. We can measure resistance. There's a continuity tester. We can also measure capacitance and AC and DC current. As far as ratings go, this unit is CAT2 rated. It can measure up to 1000 volts DC and 750 volts AC. The milliamp range is fused with a 200 milliamp fuse. Uh, and once again, if you want to gain access to that, you have to disassemble the whole unit. The amp range is unfused and can take up to 20 amps for 10 seconds. That is, if these cheap test leads don't melt down in your hands first. Um, personally, I wouldn't want to put 20 amps into this unit because I'm sure it would end up bursting into flames. Um, but it says it can do it. Um, I don't exactly believe it, but huh, if anyone wants to try it out and uh, report it in the comments, go ahead. Feel free to. So now I'm going to quickly demonstrate each of the functions on the multimeter except for the transistor tester um, because I do not have any transistors to test. Sorry about that, guys. First off, let's start with a DC voltage measurement. I have my multimeter hooked up to my Elenco variable voltage DC power supply. And right now it is reading 15.97 volts, which rounds to uh, 16 volts on my power supply meter. Let's go ahead and mess with the uh, output of the power supply. It's just so you guys can uh, see it change. There you go, put it close to nine. That's ring 8.8 .8. and my uh, meter on my power supply is also reading 8.8. .8. Let's go ahead and crank it up to the 200 volt range. There you go, still reading 15.9. And what happens when we crank it up to the 1000 volt range? Let's ring 16, 15.9. We're reading uh, high voltage. And right now it's just saying 15 volts. So what happens when we exceed our specified voltage range? Uh, let me go ahead and crank this down to two volts and see what happens. Oh, it just reads an error of one. Next, let's test this unit measuring AC voltage. And since this is a CAT2 rated device, I should be able to stick it directly into a wall outlet, which some people view as stupid, but hey, it's CAT2 rated. So let's go ahead and try it out. So I have the range set to 200 volts AC. Let's go ahead and try it out. There we go. We should be reading around 120 volts since I do live in America. And we're reading 119 volts AC. And just so you guys don't think I'm lying to you, there you go, directly into a wall outlet. And the meter seems to be holding up just fine. Um, what happens when we change it to the 750 volt range, I wonder? Goes down to high voltage. Uh, we lose a decimal place and it just reads 118 volts. Uh, what happens when uh, we exceed the specified voltage on the AC range? 
Ah, we just get R1. So there you go, that's the AC range. Let's see how responsive the continuity tester is. Yeah. It's rough, but uh, it's it's definitely rough, but it works. Yeah, very rough. Now the capacitance range on this multimeter is extremely limited. It goes from 20 nanofarads up to 200 microfarads, which isn't that great. Uh, that's why I had to go ahead and buy a completely separate capacitance meter uh, that goes from 200 picofarads all the way up to 20 millifarads. Um, but it's not that the ranges that this multimeter had didn't work, it's just that they were too limited. Um, but as I will show you, the ranges that this multimeter does have work just fine. As you can see by this side-by-side -side example, compared to my new Kaysen uh, capacitance meter, this multimeter is a bit off. Now this is a 47 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor, and as you can see, my digital multimeter is reading 53.2 microfarads, and the new Kaysen capacitance meter is reading around 47 microfarads which is the correct rating for this capacitor. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the 20 microfarad range using a 3.3 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And once again, the XL digital multimeter is reading just a tad bit high. Um, the XL multimeter is reading 3.8 microfarads and the new casein uh, capacitance meter is reading around the uh, actual rating which is 3.3 microfarads. Next let's go ahead and take a look at some of the resistance measurements. So I have the meter hooked up to a 100 ohm resistor and I am currently in the 200 ohm range and the meter is reading 99 ohms so that's pretty good. Next let's check out the 2 kilo ohm range. I currently have the meter hooked up to a 1000 ohm resistor and it is reading around 1000 ohms. Currently it's reading 981 ohms, so it's pretty close. The 20 kilo ohm range also works fine. I have the meter hooked up to a 10 kilo ohm resistor and that's working absolutely fine. Same story with the 200 kilo ohm range. I currently have it hooked up to a 100 kilo ohm resistor and it's reading uh, around 100 kilo ohms, so that's working absolutely fine as well. That's a 1 mega ohm resistor on the 2 mega ohm range, so that's also absolutely acceptable. And that's the same 1 mega ohm resistor on the 20 mega ohm range, so that's working great as well. So out of everything about this multimeter, there's only really one thing that disappoints me, and that's the fact that on the Amazon page where this multimeter is posted, um, it states that this multimeter is capable of measuring temperature and it comes with a K-type thermocouple. Um, but that is not true. As you can see, there is no function uh, for a temperature measurement on this multimeter, and it does not come with a K-type thermocouple. Um, so I was kind of disappointed uh, when I found that out when I got the multimeter. But besides that, I am perfectly happy. So for $10, this is a pretty decent multimeter. You get a variety of features, and all of those features work. Um, so in general, I'm pretty happy with my purchase of this XL digital multimeter. So that's about it for this review on the XL DT 9205A digital multimeter. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post them in the comments section. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, and if you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in my next video.